a 68 69,000 people here at Croke Park on what is an absolutely perfect afternoon and we're waiting for the captains to make their appearance watching it out there we hope you all have a great day every part of the states and so on Paddy O'Shea coming out here among the captains it's an interesting change I suppose in a way because we're so used to Jubilee teams coming out Gary Tompkins there Paddy O'Rourke as well and uh, all of the other people that we're so familiar with John O'Leary behind Tony Hanahoe here and Tony is going to be the number one captain. But we've had the Jubilee teams. Now it's a nice change, I suppose, to see the captains of all the great All-Ireland winning teams down the years. It does underline and emphasize that it's a day for winners. We start with the years 1976 and 77 because Tony Hanahoe was the captain of the victorious Dublin team in both those years. Tony from the St. Vincent club played at centre half forward both years. Yes, one of Hefo's heroes. What a great centre half forward he was. In 1978 then, Kerry were captained by Dennis Ogie Morn. Dennis, a member of the Beale Club, had the unique distinction of winning eight All-Ireland medals, all in the same position, centre half forward. Yeah, they used to say whenever he played number 11, they never lost. The supremacy continued with Tim Kennelly leading them. From the list all Emmett's club, Tim played at centre half back. Great player, and he's got a couple of great sons as well now. In 1980, Ger Power from Austin Stacks to Lee was the next Kerry captain. Ger was then right half forward, having previously been at half back. Very versatile player. In 1981, next, Kerry retained the title with Jimmy Deanahan from Fanoog, the captain at right fullback. That was the first four in a row since the great Kerry team of 1932. The fans enjoying it. In the 1982 final, Offaly took over and they were captained by Richie Connor at centre half forward. He was a member of the Nosen family from the Welsh Island Club. No five in a row that year for Kerry. Tommy Drum was Dublin's captain when they won the championship in 1983 after six years. He was from the Whitehall Colin Kills Club and he played at centre half back. One of the most consistent backs around. In centenary year 1984, Kerry were captained by Ambrose O'Donovan, who played at midfield. Ambrose from the, was from the Gunnev Gwillet Club. And he was better known as Rosie. As Kerry retained the title in 1985, they were led by Paddy O'Shea from the Gaeltock Club. By then, Paddy had moved back to right fullback. I think he had uh, other ambitions for this afternoon. In 1986, Tommy Doyle was the captain when Kerry completed three in a row. From the Honest Goal Club, Tommy was right half back. He was a very fine captain indeed. New names on the Sam McGuire Cup in 1987 when Mead were captained by their fullback Mick Lyons from Summerhill. It was Mead's first triumph in 20 years. He looks so lean, so fit. Met him earlier. He's in great form. And having got their hands on the cup after so long, Mead held on to it in 1988. Their captain then was Joe Castles, the centre half forward from Navin O'Mahony. It was a final that went to two matches. On to 1989, and Dennis Allen of the Nemo Rangers Club, Captain Cork, but unfortunately, Dennis can't be with us today. So in 1990, the year of Cork's double, with Larry Tompkins captaining the footballers, centre-half forward, Larry Strub is Castlehaven. Larry, who did his cruciate during that particular final in 1990. 1991, Paddy O'Rourke captained the down team that brought the first Ulster triumph in 23 years. Paddy is from the Burren Club and played at right half back. Defeating me that Donny year. Donegal in 1992 kept the championship in the northern province and Anthony Malloy was their captain, a midfielder. He was from the Ardrata. Donegal's one and only triumph.
Ulster's dominance continued in 1993 when Henry Downey captained Jerry to success. Henry from the Lavi Club played at centre half back. They all seem too young to be coming out as uh, Jubilee captains. Down returned in 1994, captained by G.J. Kane. His position was left half back and he played with the Newry Shamrocks. Down with this marvellous record in All Ireland finals. In 1995, Dublin's title-winning team was captained by John O'Leary from the Balbriggan O'Dwyer's club. It took a while to come, but Dublin did triumph, and, this and John was, the was captain. Time in 22 years for a goalkeeper to captain the All-Ireland champions. Next, 1996, and it was Mead's turn again, captained this time by Tommy Dow. Just listen to the cheer. Not too many people expected it that year. Tommy was another centre half forward and he was from the Dunderry Club. When Gary, when Kerry regained the championship in 1997, Liam Hassett was yet another captain playing at centre half forward. Liam's club is Lone Rangers from Kilorgan. And Kerry were the team of the year that particular season. 1998 brought the championship to Galway after a lapse of 32 years. And their team was captained by Ray Sid, but as you can imagine, Ray has other matters on his mind in the dressing room at this moment. He's one of today's substitutes. In 1999, Meade regained the title with full forward, Graham Geraghty, the captain. Looked very calm, seemed very calm when I spoke to him a little while back. And as you can imagine, he's busy at this moment also in the dressing room. And finally, and finally, last year's last champions, year's champions were, Kerry, were Kerry, who were captained by Seamus Moynihan, the fullback. Seamus is a member of the Glen Fles Club. One of the great players of our time. So, Accordia, so once, once again, let us acclaim, acclaim the, men the men who captained the All-Ireland champions, all champions over the past 25 years. So the winning captains take the applause, Mick Dunn making the introductions, and we're now just minutes away from when the teams will be coming out of the field for this latest All-Ireland Final, the 112th All-Ireland Football Final. Joe Castle's there on the left-hand side, more of the Meath people as well, plenty of Kerry involvement as you would expect. Back to Tony Hanahu and Ogie Moran on the left. I think they were all given a most enthusiastic welcome here by a very appreciative audience. Barry Tompkins there, just recently installed as Cork manager for the next two years. And Seamus Boylehan there at the very end of all of that, the uh, most recent All-Ireland winning captain. But who will win in 2001? Some nice memories for you. Yeah, with some good memories here and with some bad memories. And I hope today goes with a good memory. Would you like to be involved today? No. no. <laughs> Why not? The young man's game. I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, and certainly young man's game. And I enjoy looking at it now. How do you think it'll go? Uh, a lot of people are saying it's going to be a very easy match to meet. I don't see that. We come up here in 90 to play Cork. And we didn't play. Now, Cork were the better team in the day, but we didn't play well that day. Like, Mead played very well against Kerry. I don't think Kerry played well that day, so I don't see it as a Mead walk. I see a, a good match here today. Goal with good forwards, good midfielder. I think there was a stronger panel overall. Mick, lovely to talk to you. Enjoy the game. Thanks a lot. Is he fit enough to be playing?